When we derived the short-run market equilibrium, we simply summed over the short-run individual supply curves from the firms to come up with the short-run supply curve in the market. And where that intersected demand is where the equilibrium price in the short run formed. Now we want to talk about the long-run competitive equilibrium. And at first you might think, well, that should be in a simple extension of what we've just done. Instead of summing over the short-run supply curves for individual firms, we'll just sum over the long-run supply curves for individual firms. But that's actually not the critical distinction between short-run and long-run competitive equilibrium. Because in the long run, the number of firms in the industry is not actually fixed. There isn't a fixed number that we can sum over because firms might enter the industry by acquiring capital or they might exit the industry by liquidating capital. So the fundamental distinction between the short run and the long run at the market level is that in the short run, the number of firms is fixed because firms can't actually exit. They can shut down, but they can't leave the industry. And they can't enter because in the short run, capital is fixed and you can't acquire the capital to open a new firm. In the long run, on the other hand, the number of firms in the industry is not fixed. It's not fixed because of entry of new firms and exit of existing firms. So the fundamental force to think about in long-run competitive equilibrium is entry and exit of firms. So let's think about that and how it relates to the short-run equilibrium. In the next graph, I'm just going to graph I'm just going to graph a long-run average cost curve for one of the firms in the industry. So suppose that this is the long-run average cost curve. And we know that at the bottom of that long-run average cost curve, the zero profit long-run price happens, or what we've also called the exit price. If the price drops below that, firms don't want to remain in the industry because they'd make negative long-run profit if they stayed. If the price is above that exit price, firms do want to remain in the industry because they're making positive long-run profit. At the exit price, they're making zero long-run profit. Well, what happens if the price is above that exit price? So here we have a short-run equilibrium where the price is above the exit price. That means that the firms in the industry are making positive profit. They want to stay. There's not going to be any exit. But firms outside of this industry are looking into the industry and saying, wait a second, we could make positive profits there, which implies that they're actually making negative profits where they currently are. They can be doing better somewhere else. So firms are going to want to enter this industry. And as they enter, there'll be more firms to sum these short-run supply curves over. That's going to shift the market short-run supply curve. So as entry of new firms happens, the supply curve will shift, and that's going to push price down along the demand curve. It's going to put downward pressure on price. So as firms enter, price is going to drop. And firms are going to keep entering as long as the price is above this exit price. Because that exit price is not just an exit price, it's also an entry price. It also tells us at what price firms will enter. So f entry will continue to happen until price settles at this zero long run profit price. What if the price initially is below that exit entry price? So suppose that instead we had in our short run equilibrium picture demand and supply where this is the short run supply where we simply sum the short run supply curves for individual firms in the market suppose that crosses at a low price some price down here 
Well, now these firms are making negative profit in the industry. They are going to want to exit. No firms outside want to enter because firms here are making negative profits. So we're going to get exit. And as firms exit, we're going to sum over fewer and fewer firms. That means that supply curve is going to shift to the left as firms exit. As it shifts to the left, we're going to move up that demand curve. And that means we have upward pressure on price. And that's going to continue to happen as long as firms are exiting. And firms are going to continue to exit as long as price is below this exit entry price. So again, exit and entry are the key force that drives price in the long run. And it always drives price to this long run zero profit price, the exit entry price. When we then think about the long run supply curve, we want to start with the firm and its average cost curve, its long run average cost curve. That tells us what that zero profit price, that exit entry price is. And next to that, we can draw the market picture where we've summed all the individual demand curves to get the market demand curve. But we now know that in the long run, the price is always going to settle because of entry and exit to that zero profit long run price, which means that no matter what happens, the market's always going to supply at that price in the long run. So in the long run, the supply curve is perfectly elastic, perfectly flat at the zero profit price because entry and exit will always drive price back to that zero profit price. So if demand curve starts shifting, we're always going to supply at that price in the long run. In the short run, there may be price fluctuations, but in the long run, we settle back to the entry exit price because of that force of firms either coming in to the industry or leaving the industry as prices change.